Welcome to another TCGU video brought to you by the Chariot Group. My name is Bob Jackman and today we're going to do an introductory training on using Smart Meeting Pro. So the smart board that you have may look different than this, but if you're using the business enterprise software Meeting Pro, the, the principles behind it are going to be very, very similar. To turn on your smart board may depend on the board and the room that you have it in. So this one has a power button on the left side here. Uh, that power button may be in a slightly different place depending on the model that you have. However, if that is integrated into a room system, there may be a panel on the wall or on the table or somewhere that you need to turn on your smart board. So you'll need to look at your IT people as far as how that works in your particular space. Once it is turned on, uh, you may need to log into the computer. There may be some information your IT people have for you as far as logging into the computer. But once you're in, you should see um, Meeting Pro. And so what happens is the default mode here is the whiteboard. So what I'm seeing right now is the whiteboard. Uh, I can switch to the desktop if I come up here. So up here on the left side, on the top, we've got desktop and whiteboard. And those are the two main things that we're going to look at today. If I click on desktop, I see my desktop just like I normally would. Um, I can open up programs, do everything that I normally would with my computer on this desktop view. And then when I go to whiteboard, I have basically a whiteboard space. And so I can pick up either of the pens and just write in this whiteboard space. Okay, and so that allows me to write on it just as I would a whiteboard. So going on beyond the basics, we're going to go into the whiteboard first, then we'll come back to the desktop and some of the things that you can do there. So in the whiteboard space, I just pick up my pen and I start writing. Uh, some of the boards on the bottom will have these buttons, the different colors. So you've got black, red, green, and blue. And as I hit those different colors, that will allow me to write in those different colors. So it allows me to really easily change colors. So if I need to change that color a little bit. The other thing I can do with this meeting board space is once I fill up my space and I start running out of space, all I need to do is touch with my finger and I can move that space around. So that gives me the ability to continue to get more space to, to draw and to write and to share my ideas. So that's kind of nice because I've got an, basically an infinite amount of space here that I can continue to write. If I want to get a second page, I can do that as well. At the bottom, you can see I've got one page here. If I hit the icon that looks like a page with a plus sign, that will give me a new page, and then I can go and start writing on that new page. So you can have as many pages as you need to, and now I can go back to that first page by clicking on that first page, and now I'm back to that first page, and again, use my finger to pan around the space. Okay. If I want to, I can take two fingers. Let me put my pen back here. It just magnetizes there. Um, I can zoom in or out on this space as well. So I can use two fingers to zoom in or to zoom out. So now that we've got a little bit more than is visible, I can zoom out slightly and start to see all of that content together. But then I can still zoom back in and you know fill in some of the details if I need to, and then zoom back out again to, to see all of that. While I'm zooming and panning around, I have what's called the radar view over here to the right. And this radar view enables me to see kind of a, a thumbnail of all the content on my page. And then the blue part that you see right here shows what's currently visible. So as I zoom back in on these details, you'll notice that blue section gets a little bit smaller and more condensed because that's showing what the visible space currently is. And then I can use my two fingers to zoom back out and, and see that as well. Okay, so that's how the zooming and the panning works. Okay, while I'm also in this mode, if I were to click on something, so I need to make sure to click on the writing itself, not like in between the writing, but on the writing itself. If I click on something, you'll notice it's selected. And so with that selected, you can see that border around it. I've got some of these extra things. I've got this one on top to rotate and, and resize and all that. Once I've selected it, if I put my finger, now I'm moving that piece of content Whereas if I click outside of that, I'm moving the space. So even if I put my finger over the green, if I just click and move, I'm panning. But once I've clicked it once to select it, now when I put my finger on that and move, I'm moving that piece. That can be a part that gets really confusing for some people is they go to move something. What happens is they'll, they'll touch it, but not really. And then they'll go to move it. And then they can't figure out why the whole space isn't moving. They're just moving that one piece. Uh, and that would be why. So you want to watch to make sure as you click on something that you're not selecting it and then trying to move around. Okay. So this mode is called pan. If you notice on the far left here, I've got my, uh, my tools. 
And so this first tool that we're on right now in the default is pan. And again, that allows me, as I touch this, the board, to pan that space around. Uh, if I go to select, now as I click and drag, I'm creating what's called a selection marquee. Uh, and what that enables me to do is to select multiple objects at the same time. Now I don't have the option, as I do that, I'm not gonna be moving things around, but if I click on this green, it enables me to move that. So rather than moving the space, if I touch and move, I'm gonna move an individual object. The cool thing about the select as well is I can select multiple objects and move them together as a group, which I cannot do that during uh, in the pan setting. Once I've selected multiple objects, I can also hit one of these drop-down boxes, and I can go to grouping, and I can group them together. So if I've got a section that really goes together, then I can go back to pan, and then when I select that group, I can move it because it's now grouped into one object. Okay, so that's the difference between pan and select. Uh, next, we've got pen. So if I click on pen. I get again the, the different colors of pen and also the different sizes. So if I come in here and select green thick, it'll allow me to, to write that way. And so if I want thicker, I can write thicker that way. I also have highlighters that I can come in and highlight. Okay. For some reason, sometimes if, what will happen is I'll go and select a pen and I use my finger and it doesn't want to write. Uh, if you pick up your pen, usually if you come in and select the, the pen that way. Oh, where'd that go? It, oh, they changed that, so it doesn't doesn't work that way. Uh, but that'll allow me to do it. And the old, some of the older versions, when you'd pick up, you'd have to use the pen to write with it. Looks like they fixed that. Um, I also have the ability to do eraser here. Okay, I can also use my fist to erase. So if I use a fist, I can erase. One thing to watch out for is because this board is optical. A lot of times my sleeve will get in the way, or I've seen women their blouses or the bottom of my jacket will get in the way as well. So you just want to kind of step back a little bit as you do that. You can also use your whole hand okay, to, to go through an erase like that. Or I can come up here and select an eraser. I also have the option to choose some shapes. So if I click shapes, I can pick the shape that I want. And then I click and drag. So I choose the shape that I want, touch and drag to draw that shape. Once that shape is there, then I can tap on the shape. It will select the shape and I can move it. So if I touch and drag though, so let me go back to my shapes. If I touch and drag, it's not going to select it, it's going to draw a new shape. So I want to touch it first, just tap it, then I can drag that around. Uh, we've got the cool check marks, those are always fun, or the X's, which can be fun to do in meetings as far as, um, like I use those when we go to um, a task list. So we assigned a bunch of assignments in the last meeting, we're going to review those, and I can go check or X whether or not those got done, that's kind of fun to do. And I also have different lines here that I can draw, and we can change the properties of those lines later. So if I go back to the select tool, I can select a particular shape object, hit the drop down and go to properties if I want to change that. So if I want to change the inside color, I can do that, or the outside line. So there's a line on the outside, inside, change the thickness, the line style, transparency, all stuff like that. Click OK. So that allow, enables me to do that. Once I've selected an object, I can also take two fingers and resize and reshape them, or resize them if I need to. I can also use this top one to rotate, or I can use two fingers to rotate as well. So that allows me to rotate and resize. There is a button on here for text. I tend to not use it, and the reason why is it gets kind of confusing. Let me go back to pan and get some empty space here. If I just touch where I want the writing to go and I start typing, it will create the text box for me. If I choose the text tool and I come and start selecting, then for some reason it stays on that text tool. So I just don't use it because I just start typing. Um, but then I can select it, resize it, or I can double click on it, highlight it, change the font size. You know, there are lots of different things that I can do there. If I touch these handles on the far right and left, I can resize that text box width-wise, otherwise it'll try to go up and down. I can then select it and move it if I'm in pan mode or use the selection tool. So that's kind of the, the real basics on how to do that. Um, this becomes a great way as you're in meetings to jot down the ideas that you normally would on a whiteboard, yet I, we're not just confined to the space that we have here. We can move that space around and write as much as we want to. The next step then gets to, okay, what if we want to go onto the internet and do some things like that uh, during our meeting, pull up Excel spreadsheet. Those are all possible as well. So what I'm going to do is go to the desktop, and then when I get to the desktop, then I can pull up you know, the internet, um, other programs like that, and it enables me to do uh, a lot of different things. Okay? 
When I'm on the desktop, um, and also when I'm not, I have this really cool feature when I pick up the pen, Smart Ink pops up, and this little icon right here is the Smart Ink. And so what I can do is I can click on this, and I get a bunch of options like pens and highlighters and stuff. So if I pick up my pen, that enables me to draw over this. So we can be, you know, maybe we're talking about Google's page here, and I want to make some comments. You know, we want to move this over to here. Whatever it is we're doing, we can collaborate on that. Then when I'm done with this, maybe I want to take a picture of this and put it into my notes. And the way I do that is I'm going to click Capture over here on the left, and I can do a full screen capture or a rectangular selection. If I do full screen, it's going to take a picture, obviously, of the full screen. If I do rectangular, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to start in one corner and drag that to the other corner. It's a little slow today. And then it will take a picture of just that section and it will put it into my notes as an image so that I can drag and move that around. When it comes in, it is already selected, so it should be easy to move, but then you may want to click outside of that to deselect that so you're not keep moving it. All my writing is still there, and I can continue to write over it, but I can't erase it. So if I pick up the eraser, I'm not going to be able to erase it. So if you want to be able to really draw over it, you might go out onto the web, capture the image, bring it in, and then write on it in, in, um, while you're in the whiteboard space. So it depends on what your goals are. If it is something you just want to talk about a little bit and draw some up, that's great. If you decide later you want to capture it, that's great too. Uh, but if you want to be able to draw and move and, and do a little bit more things, you may want to capture it in first. So if you know you're going to collaborate, you may do that. So back to the desktop with the Smart Ink. Okay, again, I can click on this and this will give me some more options. Um, a toolbox option as well, and that's where my capture is. So I can click on that capture tool there as well to do my capture. And again, I've got area capture, window capture, um, full desktop capture, or a free hand where I can drag it around whatever I want. The other one that's kind of cool is this one with the A, is I can click on this and it allows me to write So I can write something and it will convert that to text for me. And so when I have it converted to text, I can edit them and see some pen editing gestures here. So I could circle this C and then I can say I need a capital C and it will replace that. Okay? Or I can strike through like the and it will get rid of that. Or I can do a little caret like this and it will insert and I can draw a vertical line, a lot of space. So those are the four editing gestures that I can do. When I'm happy with it, I hit the check mark, and it says, where do I want that? I'm gonna say right here, and it's gonna be as if I clicked and typed it right there. And so that then takes us you know, to search for that or whatever that typing may be. So that enables us to just handwrite things in there. I could bring up an on-screen keyboard, uh, but I find it a lot easier to write uh, and convert it to text that way. It seems to be a little bit faster most of the time. And then again, once I'm there, I can go back and forth between the whiteboard and the desktop just by clicking up here on the left side. So that's the basics. That's the basics of how to use your, oh, there's one more thing I wanna mention. So let's go back to the whiteboard. When I'm all done with my meeting, we've, we've captured all this. Um, I wanna save this or email it out. I've got a couple of options there. I can do file, save, save as. I can save it as a, a uh, meeting profile, which is a .fcw. Uh, and what that will do is that'll save it into a format that we can open up again and edit later. Now you do need to have the, there is a, a version that you can install on your computer, your desktop computer, to open up those files. But a lot of people won't have that already installed if they don't already. Um, and so you also can save that as a PDF and send it out as a high resolution PDF where they can look at it. They're not gonna have the ability to edit it or move things around anymore, but they'll be able to see the content. So when you're done with your meeting, PDF is a great way to send that out unless everybody already has that. Uh, desktop version software called the personal edition. I can also send to mail recipients. So if I set up the mail properly into uh, in here, it can have it set up to email that out. So I could type in the email addresses and we'll have other videos that show some other ways that you can email that out. Uh, and that's pretty much all I've done. Then there's a reset room option. So I can click on reset room. That will give me the option to email that all out, save it and close this and reset it as well so that whoever's gonna come into this conference room next, it will be ready for them. So that's it, that's the basics uh, of using Smart Meeting Pro. We've got the whiteboard space. While you're in the whiteboard space, just pick up a pen and start writing. You can use your finger to move it around. You've got the select and the pen are the two different options as far as moving the space around or moving objects around. 
We also have the, the shapes text. You can just start typing and it will put the text for you. I can go to the desktop and that's the same as if I was on my computer. I can pull up pretty much any program, pick up a pen and start writing over it with the Smart Ink, as well as uh, convert writing to text and insert the text on there. We'll have more videos on some of those other features a little bit more in the future. So keep watching and thanks for watching. Don't forget to share.